Good morning, church fam. It is so good to be with you this morning. We are sending so much love and prayers and Amen. encouragement your way. We have been praying and interceding and just trusting God to continue to work beautifully in your lives. Absolutely. I hope and we hope that you enjoyed Tim Clark, Pastor Tim yeah, from Ballarat so Central good, last week. Wasn't yeah. he? I loved him. Good fun. Tim was good fun. So Tim, yeah. if you're watching it all, thank you, my brother. Um, the feedback has been excellent. God used you mighty yeah. in a mighty, mighty way. So amen for that. Absolutely. And um, a huge shout out to Ray and Vicky. We love them so much. They have um, been delivering flowers and food parcels and doing a whole stack of things yeah. on our behalf over the last few months. So we want to thank them so much that they just love to be a blessing and support the yeah, church totally. family. Amen. And bless the church family. Amen. Amen. We also have some really special packs coming out over the next few weeks to all of you because we just want to encourage you and love on you. So we're going to need some extra helpers besides just Ray and Vicky. So when so, your phone rings, don't ignore it. It's us. We need you. Well, I would love you to contact me, actually. If you have some time and you can deliver some packs, please get in touch with me over the next few days because we need a whole team of people so we can bless our entire church family, yeah? Amen. Amen. Well, Pastor Andrew and I kind of had a bit of crazy worship here this morning. <laughs> before um, It was incredible before yeah. we've recorded this sermon. And as we were just worshipping, Holy Spirit downloaded a couple of things to me. So I want to share that with you this morning so the first thing that holy spirit said is that he wants to take some burdens from us yeah come on he wants to take some burdens from us and if we want the lord to take some burdens from us and we have some things that are feeling really heavy and weighty we actually need to surrender those to him yeah, yeah? he on. can't take them amen. if we're not willing to surrender them i mean i love the scripture and i want to share it with you that says, then Jesus said to me, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. So if you feel weary this morning, if yep. you feel like you're carrying a heavy burden this morning, yep. I actually want you to close your eyes and just position yourself in the presence of God. And we're going to pray for God to just lift that burden off for you and for you to be willing to surrender that burden to him. So can we pray? Yeah, absolutely. Amen. <laughs> Wait, thank no, you, we Lord. can't. <laughs> so ungodly. <laughs> We thank you, Lord, that you are our burden bearer. I thank you that um, you know every story, God, of every church family member, of every visitor, of everybody that's listening this morning. You know their story. You know their heartache. Yeah. You know their pain, Father. You know just the burdens that they're carrying and the struggle that they're walking through right now. But you know what, God? I thank you that you say, come to me. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened. So we want to come to you this morning morning father yeah we want to surrender Bless the things God. that are weighty and heavy and that are just burdening us and we want to give those things to you father that we can step into a place of rest so we say this morning lord take these burdens father we give them to you god in every room yeah, in every bedroom you, in every thank living you, room right now father just take those burdens lift them off your children father pour in your peace god that surpasses all understanding may they know that you are the god of love who is with them and yeah. for them that you are their burden bearer you are their releaser you are Come their on. peace Bless you, you are their joy lord Amen. let there be just such a supernatural touch and infilling from you right now lord we pray yeah in jesus, jesus name. name amen amen how cool is that that we can just surrender stuff to god yeah, totally all right number two god said something else to me this morning which i'm really excited about and it was that he's fighting for us so are you in a battle right now? Do you feel like you're in the middle of like facing this enemy and you're thinking, I've got to conquer this thing. I have got to beat this thing. I've got to win this battle. And you're putting it all on you. But God's saying, I fight for you. Yeah. I'm fighting for you. Exodus 14, 14 says, the Lord will fight for you and you have only to be silent. So good. Second Chronicles 20 verse 17 says, You will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm, 
hold your position and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. Yeah, come on. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them and the Lord will be with you. Yeah, amen. And one more I really want to share because I'm excited. Deuteronomy 20 verse 4 says, For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies. Come on. To give you the victory. Amen. So don't think that you've got to win the victory this morning because God, yeah. God is fighting your battle. God is going to win the victory for you if you just lean in and cling to him and draw near to him and be still and know that he is God. He is going to fight your battle and he is going to bring about your victory in Jesus' name. So there is great victory coming to you, church family. There are great battles that are going to be conquered, yeah, because God is for us, Amen. not we, against us. We used to sing an old song in church. It was a happy, clappy song. It wasn't a lot of musos back then. And it was the battle is won by lifting Jesus higher yeah. in the midst of them, you know, in the midst of you. Whenever we're going through stuff, lift Jesus high. Whenever we're going yeah. through trials and tribulations, yeah. focus on him. Amen. Lean in. He's going to win the battle now, for you. Two weeks ago, we were talking about actually, even before Tim, for two weeks, we've been talking about God's desire is his very best for us. Yeah, come on. And, and, and we shared and we looked at, we started to look at the Beatitudes a few weeks ago. And I, I really want to continue along that because to experience and live in his best requires us being, and you've already nailed it with God's word, um, the prophetic word this morning, was we need to be in total surrender yeah. total surrender to him where he's yeah. in control where he makes um, the decisions in a place where sometimes it, it makes no sense and we don't understand but we trust him in that then we start to live in his best for us yeah really and true. so i want to continue and jump in where we left off just really quickly because we, we only just touched on it and then we had to pray but from matthew chapter 5 verse 6 God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, yes. for they'll be satisfied. Mm -hmm. And a lot of versions for the word justice, actually it's the same Greek word for righteousness, justice and righteousness. Um, and I tried to pronounce the word, I think I've practiced it well enough. Um, oh, we're it, doing this it, again. It's, it's <laughs> dika yusame. Dika yusame. Nay, nay, nay. But it's it means word. a righteousness and justice that comes from God. Yeah, He's the source, he's the author of divine righteousness of divine justice it's it's not what we think yeah so we we have to be careful that we don't get caught up there it's not our eyes it's his eyes it's what he sees what he deems right yes. what he deems just yeah. so he's god we can't think like him and i think i mentioned a couple of weeks ago if you want to think that you know better than god then you don't need god and you know thanks for your faith just leave it at the table and walk out the door he's god yeah he's the creator of everything he's the one that's in charge so we have to trust him but anyway it's those who hunger and thirst and and this hunger this thirst it's a dying a, a dying of hunger it's a dying of thirst it's it's a baby crying because it wants its food yeah. and for those of you that have ever had children that child wow. is not going to be silent yeah. until it gets what it needs yes, yeah it, it, it's like we, we're so hungry and, and we're so thirsty that we're not going to shut up until we till we get it till we grab a hold of it nothing nothing will satisfy us except god except him except father except his righteousness except his justice justice you know if we're walking with the lord and and we still have this place within us that's empty maybe it's because we're, we're living with what we think's right and what we think's just not being hungry and thirsty for what is just and for what is righteous amen mm. so we don't need to understand the hunger and thirst we just need to trust it yeah, yeah? we just need to trust it and it, it's a, a desperation that's born out of truth this is God's desire for us is his best. So when this hunger and thirst is there, it, it's born out of truth. You want more of him all the time. Like this morning when we were worshipping earlier, yeah, yeah. you know, we could have just stayed there for so long, but we knew Dave was coming to film and coffee needed to be drunk and all those important things in life, <laughs> you know. Uh, and so we... Desperation is, um, <laughs> it's way beyond your comfort zone, isn't it? It's not just cruising. No. It's not just... Um, ticking off the boxes it's a, it's not just day to day it's actually yeah. you know it's way beyond your comfort zone there's a desperateness there's a hunger there's a thirst for god yeah. to just 
continually seek him to want to be in his presence more and more to want to hear his voice yeah. more to want to be still and, and just rest in his goodness like a, it's not a comfortable kind of no. living it's way beyond your comfort zone yeah. but isn't it it's so funny because we often share God always does the extraordinary out of our comfort zone like yeah, we totally. don't like to be out of our comfort yeah, zone that's where he it's lives. not a place that we like to live in but every time we step out of our comfort zone is when we actually yeah. see God yeah. work the most because there's a desperation there's a hunger there's a thirst yeah. and God promises that, that those that hunger and thirst will be filled that's right and so if you want to be filled a little bit like that first word that you had if mm -hmm. you're carrying burdens give them to God so you've got to be open honest transparent you need to be able to say Lord I'm struggling with this and then yeah. give it and hand it over to him and that hunger and thirst is a little bit like that church if if you want to be filled if you want that hunger and thirst quenched and satisfied then you and I then we need to admit that hunger and thirst we need to admit it yeah you know we need we need to say God I just want more of you in this place and you know what the the brilliance is because God's desire for us is his best it's totally for free he gives it to you for free it costs you nothing but your openness opening yes. up your heart saying God I want yeah. more I don't know how don't know when, but I, I, I just need you to satisfy, need you to satisfy me. Not the big TVs, not the brand new Xbox, not the, the flash car, the Calais, whatever it might be. It's him, only him that can satisfy us. Amen. Mm, yeah. But anyway, Matthew 5, I want to keep going through the Beatitudes because there's some things that Father wants to give us in wanting to give us his best and we need to know them. It's good. So, the next beatitude is God blesses those who are merciful for they'll be shown mercy. Yeah. I, I love this because daddy so desires for us to experience his best. Yeah. Yeah. That he makes this one for me. He makes it really simple because the word mercy here in the Greek is the word. Um, it's really, it's a much easier word. It's Elimon. Yeah. Or Eliamon. Yeah. What does uh, it mean? It actually means mercy. It, it, it actually means that. It means to yeah. show compassion. And so it, what he's saying is those who show mercy to others those who show compassion to others those who actually have a heart like God's heart to the people around them Andy Stanley would say you know what does love require of me here those that actually act that that answer out with those that are around them it, it says those who are merciful they'll be shown mercy you and I if we live that life we're the ones that are going to experience the compassion of God yeah. the mercy of God yeah I, I love that so if you're not experiencing God's mercy God's compassion may, maybe just I'm just putting it out there you know maybe you, you you're not living merciful you know as a merciful person towards others you're not showing compassion maybe a little bit judgmental i'm not making a judgment myself i'm just working with what the scripture says yeah and i would love to tear the page out if you don't like it but it's it's on my tablet it won't work um but the point is that if you want to experience god's compassionate love then you need to show that compassionate love mm. it's a promise that he gives us you know, we're the ones that are going to be shown the mercy, shown compassion. We're the ones that are going to receive that. You know, it's great. How good is it when you actually receive oh, mercy and yeah, compassion? Come on. Yeah, like, totally. You know, especially if you're walking through some kind of struggle, and you know, it's so easy to be hard on ourselves as it is, but then to receive kindness and mercy and compassion yeah. and, and actually bring such breakthrough because you know it kind of causes your defenses to fall down and to allow God to do a greater work in you when yeah. you experience mercy and compassion so that so is the heart of God so when we show that to others we're actually creating space for them to have an encounter with God and experience healing well you could almost do it selfishly not really because it does it comes from the overflow of the heart yeah but when you show mercy, when you show grace, when you show, forgive, you know, give forgiveness, show forgiveness, when you do those things, we not only get to understand Father God towards us, but we get to experience him and know his heart when he's doing those things. Yeah, this absolutely. must be how God feels yeah. when he show, shows mercy, how he feels when he's forgiving people, yeah? So we get to know him even better because Papa's desire for us is his very best. I really believe the more... 
mercy and compassion we've received from God, the more we can actually give to others. Yeah, absolutely. Because we can't give what we haven't experienced or we don't have. Preach so it. often people that are harsh or judgmental um, need more mercy and love and compassion because they haven't experienced or encountered that with God or there would be an overflow of that into someone yeah, else. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know, like we were saying before, get with God. Get with God. Sit with God. Totally. Worship God. Be with Him. Allow Him to do a deep working on the inside because then these things will naturally flow out of you. Well, it continues because Matthew, Matthew verse 8 in, in chapter 5 said, God blesses those whose hearts are pure, pure, mm. for they will see God. Now, the pure in heart, pure, pure here, it's the Greek word katharos, and, and, and it means lean, pure, unstained, either literally or ceremonial, uh, ceremonially. Uh, it's guiltless, innocent, upright. But this is the best explanation, I think. It also means without mixture or without, an add, without adding a mixture, you know, hence the word clean or pure. So think of it this way, a mixed drink is tainted. You've got water that's pure, you add cordial, it's no longer pure. Yeah, it, it, for those of you that drink, and I know no one in our church does, you have vodka and you put a flavour in it, it's now tainted. Yeah, it's no longer the pure alcohol drink. I'm, 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 I'm sort of grabbing for really poor analogies, but God <laughs> wants us to be totally separated for him totally separated for him he wants us unmixed do you get it he doesn't need you to add something else or put something else in the way because an unmixed heart is a pure heart an unmixed heart an untainted heart is a pure heart that means that you and i don't have stuff fighting for our affection yeah, mm, okay. because the minute that we've got things, we love God, but we love doing this as well. And, and I'm just saying where we start to prioritize, you know, whether God's going to get our attention or not. Now we're, we're tainting the affection that we have for him. Mm, that, and that's okay. mixed. And that's hard because life gets in the way. You know, family gets in the yeah, way, work gets fall in the way. Sure. We yeah. all, you know. Absolutely. I look at that and I think, well, you know, the only way that I can be pure in our heart is because of the blood of Jesus. Because... You know, like I can lean my heart into God as much as possible, but we're not perfect people. We fall short, we Absolutely. get it wrong, we get distracted, um, you know, and then we go, oh, this isn't working very well. I need to lean in again. I need to live in this place all the time. But it's, see, the, there's always a cost, yeah? yeah? Now, his desire is the best for us. The cost is, though, that we've got to lean into him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, See, if Daddy wants, if his desire for us is his very best, he wants us focused on him, totally focused on him. And then if we focus on him, our hearts are totally turned towards him. It's in that place that we'll see him. You know, the promise, the promise is, blessed are those whose hearts are pure. How do you keep your heart pure? Yeah, how do you? Focus on God. <laughs> Good. Simple. Focus on God. That's you don't good. have to do anything else. Just focus on him. You're going through a trial and tribulation. You've got a burden. Sit with him. Yeah. Worship him. Focus on him. Turn your eyes toward him. Yeah? That's really good. The, the, as you read the word, the, really the reading of the word is going to transform your mind. Yeah, It's going to do all that. Focus on him. It keeps your heart pure. And when your heart's pure, you get to, you get to see God. And and, and I, I really love this because it's the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. If you read in the Exodus, and I won't read it because of time, but in chapter 33, you read the story of, of Moses and it says, look, then the Lord said, this, there's a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I'll put you in the cleft of the rock and cover with, with, with you with my hand until I've passed. Then I'll remove my hand and you will see my back. But my face must not be seen because there in the Old Testament in Exodus, had, had Moses seen God, he would have died. The glory yeah. of God would have been too much. But now we're sons and daughters of God. We're, we're seated in heavenly places. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're citizens of heaven. We're his ambassadors. We have this wonderful new covenant because of Jesus, because of the death and resurrection. Yeah, and it says, says basically, purely, beautifully, God blesses those who, whose hearts are pure. We don't have to do nothing for that. We have to focus on him. Yeah. For they will see God. We are experiencing something that the Israelites could never experience. Yeah. yeah? Wow. They just they couldn't. They had oh, to be good. hidden from being able to see the wonderful, beautiful, powerful glory of God. Yeah, it's so good. But we're his children. So you it's want to so keep good. your heart pure? Gaze on him. 
Yeah. Focus on him. Yeah, great. Stick with him. Mm. <laughs> Nothing else but him. Amen? Yeah, it's really good. You know, God really blesses good. those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. We mm. can see God. Uh, there's always more for us, regardless of what we're experiencing, yeah, what absolutely. we're encountering with God. Absolutely. There is always more. And, and, and I know in the past, oh, I've had people, you know, that have always said, you, you shouldn't be chasing more of God. You know, you've already got all of him. It's true, I have all of him. Totally all of him. The very power that, that raised Jesus from the dead lives within me. But I want to experience more. In the same way that with my wife, we have a good relationship, but we can have a great relationship. We have a great relationship. We can have an excellent relationship. There's always room to move, yeah. to improve, to grow. Now, this is nothing that I can do but to sit with him. And as I sit with him, he speaks and I learn and I grow. We grow together. Yeah. yeah really and so there's good. more where we can actually experience God. Because sometimes you and I, we're wowed by the men and women of God we encounter, those that yeah. we listen to, the way that God moves through them and talks through them but you know what I'm not dissing them there is nothing special about them other than that hunger and thirst yes. they sit and rest with the Father and those that yes. are pure in heart get to see God and when you see God one encounter with God so changes good. your life forever so good yeah I love that. That's such a good example because, you know, often we think, oh, well, you know, these great men and women of God, these incredible men and women of God, they're, you know, they've got gifts that I don't have or they have talents that I don't have. But, but it's true. They just sit with God and it's what they do. They actually make the time to sit with God. I've heard Heidi Baker yeah, share before that, you know, and she has such a phenomenal ministry, but she shares that she sits with God for four hours every day. She gets up at 4 a.m. or something. When, when you said four sits. hours, I was like, oh, yeah, I could do that in, <laughs> in a week. <laughs> that was half an hour a day. But, you know, she shares that she sits with God for four hours every day and because she shares that she can't do what she does unless she sits with God yeah, for come four on. hours every come day. On. She can't carry what she carries. She can't be anointed like she's anointed. She can't, she can't do this whole journey unless she sits with God for four hours yeah. every day. Now that is, that's a huge challenge to all of us that, you know, where, where, wherever we're at, come on. we can step out of our comfort zone. We can set that alarm half an hour earlier. We, we can make a decision and position ourselves to sit with God yeah. and you know when you sit with God God does extraordinary things it's not in a job. you but extraordinary yeah, things it, through you as well it's not a job it's not a work it's, oh, a, it's, a, it's a hunger it's a thirst it's yeah. something that you want to do yeah, and the more that you on. do it the more that you love it because the more that you experience him and it's mm. you know that verse really we could just sit with because it's only those who don't have other affections fighting for the place of daddy yeah yeah it's only those that choose to keep Father God, our, our, our Abba, our Father, our Lord, keeping Him front and centre, their sole focus, that where they're able to trust Him through anything and everything, they get to see God. Yeah. And not just once and they remember that time forever, on mm. and on and on again. Yeah, We've got to so keep flying. Good. Verse 9, God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called children of God. I, I really like this, but you're going to love this verse. Because... <laughs> The, the, the principle for peace is the same as the principle for farming, for, for crops. You, you can't underestimate the power of the, the seed, what you're planting, because those who are peacemakers will actually sow seeds of peace. And, they'll, and, and the word will tell us, but they'll sow a harvest of, of goodness, of righteousness. Yeah, that's great. Think about what Jesus did. He washed the feet of men that were going to betray him. Yeah, um, He had lunch with a tax cheat. He yeah, honoured a woman on. that society had condemned. Yeah. Jesus built bridges by healing hurts. Yes, come on. That's what he did. It's he really stopped good. conflict by building peace in the inner man, yeah. in the inside of people. He sowed seeds of peace in people's hearts. I love that. But this is where it gets really tough. This is So this is the stuff that I get excited about because... The truth is that you and I, we can't, get this, we can't be peacemakers until we're in the middle of a conflict. Yeah, wow. 
Yeah. Wow, that's a good challenge, isn't it? Well, that's we can't really be peacemakers great. until we're in the middle of a war. We can't be yes. peacemakers until our peace is tested by trials and tribulations and yeah, situations wow. and, and circumstances. That's now, now, so good. I love God's that. desire for us is his best, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. So to get his best, to experience his best, sometimes you and I, we may need to go through our worst. Yeah. I know, totally. I say that with a smile on my face. Hey, thanks for that, <laughs> Pastor. What a great word. We're going to experience more of God because we're going through such a crummy time, yeah? Yeah. The truth is, to experience his best for us, sometimes we have to go through our worst because no matter what we go through, no matter what you and I are experiencing, no matter what we're thinking, Father's God desires desire for us is always his very best it's so good it's always his very best mm. you know you might find that you're in the middle of a of life's war and your heart and your head are in such a battle that it that it feels like you're drowning that you can't win it makes no sense you feel like you can't trust anyone at the moment you know yeah. that you can't even see the real you nor can you see your real friends you can't see the way through you know maybe you just can't go on anymore but it's in that space because you have a heart that is pure, that's not tainted, that's not mixed, yeah? Because you have a heart that trusts Father when everything around you is screaming at you and you, you don't know how to answer. You're at peace. You can bring peace because in that place you get to see God and God speaks into the situation. Yeah, wow. You know, that's I, so I, good. I, I love that truth. It's in the midst of our darkness, the pure in heart see God. Mm, yeah? Wow. In the yeah. midst of it all, you still see God. Mm. Stephen is being stoned and he says, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Father. Wow. Yeah. It's in the wow. midst when we keep our hearts pure, untainted, that when we're peacemakers, when what does love require of me, when we live in that space and place, that we get to see God move in a way that we hear testimonies of and we just think, oh, wow, I want to experience that for yeah. myself. I want to know God like that. Mm. Yeah. Because it's so powerful, isn't it, to like love in the midst of um, conflict or when someone is unlovely or unkind. Yeah. It's so powerful to actually love someone through that. That's being a peacemaker, isn't it? It's choosing love rather than choosing to react or choosing to behave like somebody else behaved. I love how Danny Silk often shares. He goes, you know, the most powerful person in the room is the pow is the person who's going to choose love yeah, come and, on. Not, and not react in their flesh, yeah. not react yeah. because of the pain that's just been inflicted upon them by someone else. But the powerful person is the person that can control who they are yeah. and they choose to love no matter what. And what I love about that, because then Philippians 4 makes sense. Verse 7, it says, Then you will experience God's peace. Yeah. When you're a peacemaker, you'll experience God's peace, so good. which exceeds anything that we can understand. Mm. So don't try to grapple with it, make sense of it. You can't. His peace will guard your hearts, our hearts, and minds as we live in Christ Jesus. Yeah, come you know, on. What a beautiful place to live. Being so right good. doesn't matter anymore. You know? Yeah, well, you know, you always share relationship trumps being right. Yeah. It's not about being right. It's actually about a peace, being a peacemaker. It's about choosing to love with the Father's love, no matter what it is that's yeah. coming your way. Yeah, Which is a huge challenge for all of us, isn't it? <laughs> but it is something that, that you can grow in because I, I think that's something that we've really grown in yeah, over amen. the years, Absolutely. like choosing love no matter what. You know, years ago um, when we were in challenging situations, we probably would have reacted within ourselves. But over the years, as we've just leaned into God, he's actually taught us how to love no matter what. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, to turn the other cheek. When instead you just want to turn the other hand. <laughs> anyway. Um, God's good. When the, you lean in, it's amazing what he does in us. Lean in, lean in, lean in. We need to pray. There are other verses to go to. <laughs> there for another day. We pray and believe that you've been blessed yeah, by this morning. We bless you by the word Jesus of truth. Name. The Come truth on. sometimes cuts like a double-edged sword, but that's okay. He's just cutting us and shaping us and pruning us more and more into the image of Jesus. Amen. Why we love you, pray, you guys. Love. He is your burden bearer. Yeah, he is fighting for you. Thank you, Lord. We love you so much, God. We just make 
a commitment right now um, to just lean into you this week and next week and the week after and the week after that. May we choose a lifestyle where we are so willing to lay down distractions, Lord, and anything that can get in the way of us just hungering and thirsting for you. So we want more. We lean in, God. Teach yeah. us to be still and know that you are God. Yes. We want to hear your voice, encounter your love, have you work in us deeply and through us powerfully in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget to minty. Don't forget to love one another. Oh. And um, we'll catch you around like a risol, they say. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen.